Uh, welcome to the uh, August um, Southern Fried DNN User Group meeting. Uh, we are doing a little something different today in that we are meeting here uh, in the middle of the afternoon, uh, our time, so that we can uh, encourage conversation and, and reach out to folks on the other side of the pond and uh, have some of those people who uh, might not be able to attend in the evenings uh, when we normally have episodes and, and meetings, uh, but then as well uh, get into the uh, UK and uh, uh, even Australian market of folks who uh, would love to participate and we'd love to have you and hear your voices as well. So thank you to everybody who's joining us uh, from, uh, again, across the pond. Uh, we're looking forward to having a conversation uh, in the roundtable style here today in which we are going to uh, really discuss why DNN versus WordPress. Um, uh, as we said, um, we're doing a little bit of different formats with some of our upcoming meetings. And um, one of the ideas here is for us to have these roundtables every few meetings in which we uh, we just have a good, lively discussion in which we share points and ideas and um, and talk about important topics. If you missed uh, the first one that we had, that was a security roundtable where Mitch Sellers uh, helped lead, and uh, I think it was one of the more enjoyable meetings that we've had recently. Um, so today we are going to have uh, and be joined by Nina Myers. Um, Nina Myers, I've kind of been bubbling uh, excited uh, about this um, because Nina Myers is one of my my idols, uh, one of the, the people who I looked up to when I first began learning anything at all about DNN. Um, I ran through skinning uh, tutorials and uh, read blog post articles and um, anything that I attributed to early work in DNN was because Nina Myers taught it to me. Um, she was an early a core member of DNN, and uh, so uh, once we have her on and confirmed, um, I'll uh, I'll gush with a few more thank yous uh, to that to that role she played to many of us uh, as we got started with DNN long long ago. Um, but to uh, to begin with, um, I'm going to pass over to David here in just a moment so that we can go over a little bit of the structure and the ground rules of what we're going to do for our uh, for our conversation today. So uh, David, do you want to uh, run through a little bit about um, uh, about our ground rules, and then I'll kind of give a, a WordPress introduction for a moment. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are here because of the exciting title of, you know, why DNN versus WordPress. So <clears throat> this is obviously a DNN meetup. Uh, so we're, we're kind of coming at it from one side, but uh, you, you may have gone, oh man, here's a chance for me to do my bashing in public, right? So, so I wanted to uh, just kind of set some ground rules right at the beginning so that we, uh, so we really know how, kind of how to operate this, this meeting. Um, you, you, you can imagine it could easily get off, uh, off into an interesting land. So we've set up a few ground rules um, for the conversation. By the way, everybody that is on the call is welcome to chime in and be a part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. This is Very much not encouraged. a presentation really by any means. It's more meant to be a round table discussion so that we can promote learning. But uh, first rule is really, this is not a tech bash session. And that goes both ways. This is not to bash DNN or WordPress for deficiencies uh, in either. Uh, this is more meant to, to, to promote and uh, talk about uh, the, some of the difference and some of the reasons why you might would choose one over the other. Um, so the next round was really to listen actively and attentively uh, to each person, ask for clarification if there's confusion, uh, don't interrupt one another. Um, we, especially with GoToMeeting, we're not in a full duplex situation, so uh, we, that won't work well anyways logistically, but we definitely want to respect whoever's talking and sharing an opinion on uh, something or some uh, information that they have uh, or experience that they've, they've, they've had. Um, also, uh, we want to challenge one another, uh, but do so respectfully, uh, obviously. You know, we want to keep it, keep it professional here. So, uh, also, we're critiquing ideas here, not people. So, uh, if it does, you know, hopefully it wouldn't happen, but if it does get a little heated at some point, just remember we're focused on the, the ideas being shared, not the people, so this is nothing personal about anything. Um, don't offer opinions really without supporting evidence of those opinions. Um, so if you have specific experience with something and you, you've, um, you've gone through a situation and you, you have some there or you have some data from statistics or something like that that you can share, it's always great to, to share that supporting evidence whenever sharing, sharing uh, a particular idea or thought uh, one towards the other. 
Also, taking quality or taking uh, responsibility for the quality of the discussion. Um, that, that's each of our responsibilities. Um, building on another's comment, uh, working towards a shared understanding is something that we want to, uh, to accomplish here. Um, not monopolizing a conversation. Um, so someone may have a ton of experience with both platforms or one over the other. So uh, I'm sure we could all just ran on for days about uh, certain experience stuff, but uh, we'll try to keep uh, you know your ideas sharing and stuff like that to a to you know a few minutes or so, so that others can chime in and kind of kind of be a part of that conversation as well. Uh, speak from your own experience. Uh, try not to generalize too much. And uh, when possible, we want to gather links and examples and tools and articles, you know, all of that, so that we can put those into the uh, the blog post when we when we do the recap uh, video of this. So that would that would make it really great for others to be able to refer back to some of the things that we're talking about and some of the reviews. And then last but not least, we'll reiterate the very first rule this is not a bash session yeah. so uh, <laughs> we, we we won't use certain phrases that we may would use uh to call the other <laughs> or else uh, we'll just get there so so that's uh so this is all meant to really just have an open conversation about because there are pros and cons to both platforms and there are situations that you can maybe use one over the other and uh this is to have some good dialogue and share experience about that so um one of the kernels, one, one of the, the topics of discussion after user group meetings and, and around a beer at the local watering hole has been, what do you say to clients when they inevitably ask you, well, why aren't we using, why aren't we using WordPress? We have a DNN website and the new marketing director comes into a client's location or um, you know, change over and somebody else uh, is hired at an employee location or, or a client location and they say, well, I know how to do things in WordPress and it's just so simple. Why is this website in DNN? And we inevitably have to answer that question sometimes on a hot seat where the assumptions are against us just because of the overwhelming amount of websites that are on WordPress and how well or commonly known WordPress is. Um, so I'm going to kind of open with a short paragraph that um, I send uh, to clients whenever they start those conversations, and it's part of a much larger document that I'll, I'll share some links out of as we kind of go through this conversation. But to answer that question myself when, when I begin, I will often tell people that WordPress is undeniably one of the most well-known tools to host a large number of the world's websites and that it's certainly one of the highest used CMSs when you look at reports that catalog and, and, and uh, list out the number of websites on certain CMS bases. Um, but after that, I begin going into different points of information. Uh, um, and uh, you know, that's kind of where we're gonna, we're gonna start off today. We have a few topics and a few categories that we can get into from, um, from security, from user role types, uh, from, extensions and extensibility um, to community focus and purpose and, and things like that. But um, let's let's check and see, uh, do we have Nina on yet? Yep, we do? On, I just, just pinged you there. So that is fantastic. She's uh, unfortunately standing out in the cold, I believe. So, hi, Nina. Hi, can you hear me? Oh, Hello. we hear you beautifully. Hello. Oh, yeah. It's very dark. Are you great? Thanks for joining us. Yes. Um, well, I don't know if you heard the introduction we gave you earlier, but um, I started off by uh, saying that I had to say thank you uh, to, to the great Nina Myers, who when we all started learning DNN long ago, it was because Nina Myers taught us DNN. I learned skinning and theming. I learned how DNN worked uh, by reading your articles and reading your blog posts, and um, it's taken a long time to say thank you, but I absolutely have to say thank you personally. Well, that's okay. I know um, I have to thank myself sometimes when I've gone to do a search on something and found, oh, shit, I answered that three years ago <laughs> in a forum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I don't well, know. Maybe um, I don't we, have enough sleep. 
Well, we're going to turn the, uh, the conversation over to you to uh, to kind of get started. Uh, you know, the the question to start it off is if uh, you have a client's location, uh, a client's new marketing director, and they turn around and say, well, why are you on DNN? Why isn't this in WordPress? Um, that's, uh, that's the point of, of tonight's uh, conversation. So I'll, I'll pass to you and we'll, uh, we'll get started passing it around and around there. Okay, so I'm actually dealing with this uh, right now. Um, I have a client, uh, I have a website I might have even posted on uh, Facebook about the problem I've got with the URLs since I've upgraded to 9.1. So I've rolled it back, mm -hmm. but in the mean, last night. But in the meantime, for a couple of weeks, the website hasn't functioned and they've got a new, um, a new marketing manager in. And of course, they would like to have things they feel are stable. And they've come in to see DNN, uh, unfortunately, when it's not been at its prettiest, because this was a DNN4 website originally that was handed to me through some very, I don't know, did you, you know when someone hands you something that's just never worked quite right? And yeah. um, I don't know why, I don't know why, I don't have the same problem when I have my own um, builds and my own upgrades, I guess because I've got a system. And right. subsequently this other, person, this other person has left the company and, you know, the new marketing manager, just all they see is a problem. And, um, of course, it's like, what is this thing, DNN? What, what, what is it? Right. So um, I've got a little bit – so I rolled a site back last night to DNN 8.4. And, and I, think, I, think, uh, I think really what I say to people is – that because I love WordPress – I want to let you know that I love WordPress. I look at it like a big candy store. I look at the colours, the <laughs> themes, the plugins. You know, I can't get three days of my life back, but I love, you know, I love WordPress. I really don't have anything against it. I only have the issue of security. And to be honest, if security was paramount with, with WordPress, um, I would find it hard to not move there from DNN on the basis that I love lollies. You know, um, and I think I could go with the groove, but I have to sleep at night. And the security aspect, from a non-technical person's point of view, in the market of how they're sold WordPress these days, concerns me a little bit. And I see people who pay five thousand dollars for um, an Envato theme that was fifty-five dollars on a standard oh. den in, uh, uh, sorry, WordPress build. And the, and and to me, I. Uh, you know, so I've got I've got some moral questions there too, and um, and I find it. We say to people, if you're not going to use, um, if you don't want to use DNN, and you don't, don't mind looking after security, don't pay that five thousand dollars for the website, because there's enough courses online that you can go and do it all yourself. But is that your core business? And when you launch your website, that's only part of it. There's a lot of maintenance. I mean, I've got my own servers. I've got um, two Linux servers. I've got my own, I bought a, a, a large um, machine and I've got it under uh, VM. So I've got two Linux machines and I've got um, two Windows machines. And by far, I've been more nervous about the Linux machines because they are so popular and they are so, you know, you need to have a security team in there to really make sure you're on top of things. And, and, and in these days, there's so much to do in business that I don't want my customers to have to worry about whether their site's been hacked and it's not if, it's when, unless you're paying money. And I, and I get, and, I, and this rubs me the wrong way that yes, you can log, you can get paid for a lot of services. So I think at the end of the day, um, I do love WordPress. I have nothing against it except security. You know, if you want to buy a car washed, I have to pay for the windows. I mean, really, you should have the windows in there already and a lock. I don't, why should I have to pay for um, this lack of security? Uh, that well, let's, the, the Windows let's has got that, that issue. Uh, WordPress has the issue. I, I love these analogies and, and phrases because they're they're the perfect sound bites that we can we can just take and and, and share. Um, let's dive into security just a little bit there. Um, you know, one of the things that I I start off when describing it with people is that WordPress did not start with developers focusing solely on security as a 
primary need and focus of what they were building. DNN did start with a focus and a, 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 a drive for security and cohesiveness as, as part of the original um, method and, and focus. Um, uh, so let's, let's kind of break down security of, of WordPress in a couple of different um, couple of different categories. And let's first off, maybe let's talk about the size of the target that WordPress has on their back. And I describe it with clients that they are the best known CMS. They are the widest footprint of CMSs on the internet today. And therefore, they're the biggest payoff for hackers who have a certain structure that they're going to go exploit. And just by the fact of being unique or different than the vast majority, means you don't have the same size target on your back. Um, would you also kind of agree to that, you know, masses exactly. kind of uh, description? I do. I do, and I say that they are almost a victim of their own success because, um, to, like, I, I listen to, um, do you ever listen to a podcast? I listen to Security Now. It's a two-hour podcast on the, the Twit, you know, um, uh, the Twit network, and there's money in hacking. It's moved from being basically a um, you know a nuisance thing. Like back in 2000, in the olden days, I used to send out, and for about three years, I sent out um, email newsletters at Christmas. That when you opened up the email, the tune would play a Merry Christmas tune in your email. And sure, um, yeah. this is, you know, this this is a completely different world now. You can't do anything. So then, as 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 you've got nuisance hackers. And um, then you get the people who can see that there's money to be made and there's a lot of money to be made and they're not, they're not making it necessarily out of, um, not because you're using WordPress, but they're using the vulnerabilities to infect other people's machines. That, um, that, that, that concerns me and there's millions and millions and millions of machines that are charged <laughs> because there's money. And with this money, you're going to have, um, I think, the, the appeal to be compromised and um, and and you know it's not like because I don't want to I don't like bashing WordPress I love it I want to I want to use it I have gone down every time I've had a problem with Dean and it's given me tears or sleepless nights I go and look at that WordPress thing and I look at it and I've got my installs and I just think oh it's just too good it's too good because I just think that my whole business model will change to having to be a bloody security expert. And I, and, and, and I, and I don't want that. The one thing that I've told people is just you, that you're as safe as you can be with me in the internet, in the nasty internet world, and I can sleep at night. And that, you know, I don't, I don't have as many clients as I had, but it is popular, it's so popular that it becomes a target. Mm -hmm. So that's a fact of, and, and, um, I think too that uh, the veracity, like when something happens, it can happen so viciously and so quickly, it frightens me. I want to bring up something else that I have given a lot of thought on. Um, do you remember is it those Podesta or some Panama, some papers that were um, exposed? A lot of people, a lot of companies' yeah. income, or you know, that yeah. was that was a, that was a, that was a that was a broken WordPress site. Now, the one thing that concerns me about that part is where's the legal standing from a business point of view at some point in, in the future that if I'm yeah. a company and I'm using WordPress and my customer's information gets compromised, where is yeah, the, um, you know, can I be sued? At what, at what point yeah. are we becoming free? Like this has really impacted people by having their their valuable information online, and um, I don't even know what it was doing there. I don't know how they accessed it. So these are questions that um, that, I, that I ask sometimes. I probably overthink things, but you know I've got to sleep at night because now I've got to cut strawberry. I pick strawberries during, you know, during summer. I don't want to have. Uh, I cry when there are things bad with my, with security, and I've got to go and update sites. <laughs> I only cry. I cry rarely. If I had WordPress, I'd be a, I'd be a mess. <laughs> okay. some sort of well, let, let me uh, let me ask then, and maybe draw the the security over to another part of it. In that we we've kind of talked about the size of the target, the, that that they're a victim of their own success, as you said. Um, but you know, maybe how about the 
the platform and the structure. I don't know specifically that that a lamp based environment is inherently more susceptible or open or hackable than an IIS based environment, but there is that structure that WordPress was built as a platform in the way it's been built and security has so long been their primary problem. Well, one of their primary problems. Is there not a move to fix that? Can they not fix it? Are they so big that it can't be fixed? Is there something different about LAMP itself that makes it so much more wild, wild west open, ready for for this, this marauding um, activity or am I Am I, am I naive in thinking that that you know that might be the case? Um, and two, you know, we've got Mitch on the line too. Security-wise, you have a, a, a thing to chime in with on that, or Nina? Yeah, I mean, this Mitch, from from my perspective, I think I, I wouldn't want to make a blanket statement that you know the lamp stack isn't as secure as Windows because I don't think that's fair. What I do see is that a lot of people approach the lamp stack with a general disdain for caring about updating. So we we have cleaned up exponentially more exploited WordPress sites than we have any other platform. Now, a lot of times it was traced to a server that wasn't patched, an FTP credential that, that wasn't managed, um, you know, not necessarily anything that's like, oh gosh, LAMP is bad or PHP is bad, but by association, we see the lackadaisical approach to it that, that leans that way. You see that with the hosting plans. You know, I can host a word, you can host a WordPress site with certain vendors that will remain nameless for like a dollar a month. And what, what I see with that is, is that you get what you pay for at a dollar a month. Um, and some of that goes back to that same volume. So, you know, I can't say, from my perspective, there's an inherent, oh gosh, you're not secure. But in our case, we see more security issues in that platform because of a lack of emphasis or concern. Um, Mitch, that's a really great, um, that's a really great view. And I wonder if it implies the other side of that or another part to that in that when I personally think of people who are fans of WordPress, I think of designers, I think of marketing people. When I think of people who know and understand the value of DNN or other platforms, maybe Drupal I'm thinking of, they're normally developers. They're people who are thinking of system and structure. Do you maybe feel that there's an element to it that is the audience, uh, the people who are involved and the marketing or advertising type people aren't as caring or religious about those updates and those upgrades and those security patches because that's not what they care about or focus on and from a developer standpoint maybe it's a different different people at the helm working on this i mean that's a good point ryan because like the dnn was really a developer community from the beginning mm -hmm. by the fabric of what it was you know right, right. the technology solution the developers were the main mm -hmm. audience right mm -hmm. whereas wordpress Started as a blog engine, you know. So, and we're going to come back. We're going to come back to that yeah. specific topic so, in a second. So it's well. like the audience inherently was different. So you know, now obviously so, there's a lot of developers yeah. involved, and, and we're right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I, so the 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 origin. Sorry, two two more seconds, Mitch. Uh, the history, the origin of these things is important. In that, if you look at the history of Joomla and where Joomla came from, is that it was built for the newspaper industry and with articles in mind for their content and therefore masthead is a term in newspapers and masthead is a term inside of Joomla and there's some ties there to who it was built by and for mm -hmm. that directed where it went. WordPress has the same thing with the blog origin um, and DNN built by developers to show off the best of what could be done in open source ASP.net had a different starting point. It had a different birth. Uh, Mitch, I stepped on you there a second ago. Yeah, yeah, no, I, and I think that's, I, I think the audience is definitely key. I, I see a lot of like what you were talking about, David, where a lot of the, the WordPress people is, is the marketing focus, you know, and Joe Craig mentioned in the comments, you know, are there more hacked WordPress sites because there's so many more. Um, again, I, it's part of the reason why I can't definitively say it's more or less. I do know there are, have been worse exploits and more rampant exploits because of the nature. 
So what, what I tend to tell people is rather than saying this is more secure or this is less secure, is I focus on the history of what's happened and the nature of the attacks. Um, you are more susceptible and people are going to be more inclined to go after a platform that has more installations. The other thing is, is densely populated installation configuration is um, also um, something that is far more likely. Um, in terms of a host that has a thousand WordPress sites sitting on one server, that's just a sitting dock to a certain extent and sometimes um, it's there. And I think Joe Brinkman's comment um, along yep. this is also important in terms of, you know, platform versus plugins. And in WordPress, a lot like DNN, many, many of the security vulnerabilities are in extensions and not the platform itself. I can't talk a lot about that on the WordPress side, um, but I know that, um, you know, it's it's a little bit hard to, to differentiate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have Nina uh, back in? Uh, part of what she was doing was heading back into her internet connection and we we're gonna see if she's uh, back up as well to join back in. Can, can you hear me? We can, Hello. beautifully. Hello. Oh. Um, so um, I'm trying to think of a thread that we were going back to and, and Nina, uh, you feel free to, uh, to to take the reins back again and, and head in a direction. But part of what we were describing there was we're still talking about security and we kind of went from they're a big target to is there something about the system or the core? Um, and we have talked about that a little bit. Um, you mentioned, Nina, that there are these services that you can pay for that will help do security for you. And that's, uh, I think that's another big nod to the fact that this is an issue with, with WordPress locations that that people need help with and they don't understand. So you have uh, you have extensions that you can put in place like WordFence and um, iThemes security. Uh, you then have um, external third-party companies or services that you uh, you pay service to, like uh, Security. Is that how you pronounce it? Security is one of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those exist as a as a marketplace or or, or an or an industry that is doing nothing but helping monitor your locations as they get bombarded. Um, and yes, but here's, know, here's my thought on this. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's my little thought on this. It's like being the, um, the glazier who throws a brick in your window with a card on it. You know, it's just, yeah. <laughs> why? why? Why don't you build it <laughs> so it doesn't, <laughs> It doesn't need it to that extent. Why do you have to have something that is an ecosystem out of a weakness? Please make it, um, please make it just something that I can use confidently. That's my theory. You know, I know I come up with an, a lot of little analogies. That's because I talk with people yeah, yeah. who have no idea at all, and I have to do some comparison. But every time I think of it, every time I think of a Blank, let's see a blank new WordPress site. This is one thing I think that DNN has got, which I'm I am pleased about, is that a blank D, a blank DNN website does give you out of the box quite a few capabilities without having to create that vulnerability. I think WordPress, on its own, by nature, if you just want to use that that blank canvas, is is a great product. But who wants to have porridge with nothing on it? That's the that's the problem. So it's not it's not the not the product itself that's um, the issue. It's the fact that you want to use it and make it look like eye candy. So um, Nina, and you want to are make you it. Saying there, are you saying there that that you feel that uh, one comparison or one difference between DNN and when you put a brand new naked install of DNN in place with, with nothing else installed extra, that it's ready to use and get things, certain things done. But yes, the part, well, a theme is not going to make it. No, you, because if you buy a theme, and, and, and I do apologize, I might have some latency on my SkyMuster satellite nope. beaming up oh, at oh. 600 ping. Anyway, um, I, 
I know when I've done a blank install and I go to that, um, you know, 22 skin, you know, that's about as good as you can get with WordPress without you having a slideshow. You, you have to, um, like, I, I don't think that DNN is the perfect solution out of the box, but if I want to have a membership on there, a, a membership uh, function, I can have that straight away. And if I want to, you know, a bit of a paywall, if I want to have, um, you know, the editor is uh, smart enough, I think, that you can implement a few things to make the site look good and function um, comfortably. And you don't have to, you just don't have, you know, apart from a slideshow and one theme, there's not much with DNN more that the average person has to do. And if there's a vulnerability, you can update that slideshow, but it's not going to affect the whole site. I've heard of people's websites stop working when they update them because of this plugin or that plugin. I mean, the sites just stop. Yeah. And so there's, there's this, there's this, I think because DNN is, this is why I'm not a developer because I'd be a pretty bad one, but um, there is there is such a learning curve with DNN as well that basically you you sort of filter out the, the shit that comes along with people who just want to hack something together and and put it on WordPress with a bit of eye candy because they don't don't do justice to the um to their audience or to their users that they're, they're doing the wrong thing by them but they can see an opportunity because there's millions using it with DNN you've got to work a bit harder and to make a product that is usable and unfortunately it is to a smaller audience so oh, you know there's there's a little less appeal there as well a big a lot smaller audience but um i was doing a website for a client who is uh who, who does do wordpress as well actually his sideline is wordpress websites but he's an it guy and we use dnn for the infrastructure for security and he was telling me that, uh, you know, the um, DNN Go um, slideshow that had that vulnerability, um, that was the best slideshow he'd ever used for, from a user's perspective. It's well thought right. out. You don't have to be an expert to use it. There's a logic in working with um, with DNN that, uh, you know, I don't want to skip around so we can sort of move on to different things, but, um, it's just an easier it's just an easier platform to use as well is it i think when you learn something with dnn you can get the gist of how everything works have you ever tried to plug in different wordpress plugins and say oh my god what it's is it where is it i feel stupid again you know i just yeah. feel stupid every time you know, so there's this logic uh and this this whole behavior um and i just uh and i so badly wish that WordPress had some of these things. And then I wish DNN had some of the WordPress things because um, well, I just... Let's get into yeah. some of those comparisons um, uh, that um, I'll kind of throw out or, or seed a few of those comparisons because you, you've touched on several of them of things you wish you had or things that you know were different. And I, I think that's one of the things that we have to explain to clients when we're, when we're explaining things to them. And I'll, I'll give you an example um, to start off with. Um, I will go back to that history of WordPress often when explaining to a client that their site might not be best suited for WordPress because WordPress has extensions and it's turned itself into so many different things, but at its core, it's a blogging system. There are articles with titles and authors. And if you are putting together a real estate website, if you're doing that in DNN, then you're using any number of things form and list, um, core things, setting up pages, there's a bunch of different ways to tackle it. But any of those ways is going to be setting up something that's custom to the data and setting that up for management and display. In WordPress, the normal way that I've seen people do that is to bend it. And they'll say, well, we're using the articles, but the author is going to be the builder of the home. And the title is going to be the address of the home. And the body description is now going to be the description of the home. And then we have the photos. and you're, you're using a blogging platform without changing it very much to then do different things with it. So sometimes you have to think about what you're building and is it appropriate to build with that tool? Yeah, it's like a key differentiator as well. Whereas in DNN, when you would build a solution for that, let's say you're using a custom module for doing the, uh, the real estate, you would build your own data tables and then you would 
build a data access layer on top yep. of that, and then your your business logic to to show the UI, right? In WordPress, you would be more apt to utilize the database that it's is there. already there and manipulate the templating on top of it, you know, to be able to do what you need to do with it and so forth. There's obviously other ways to do it. You can do it similar, same way in uh, WordPress scan DNM, but that, those are two different, different points, very different, different, different directions. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's something that I think um, that I notice as well that DNN has a very clear separation of the design model, the business model. You know, there's there's uh, this is where I think WordPress gets a little bit muddied, as well as you are pointing out that if if something doesn't work, it can um, on one aspect of WordPress it can affect the site so dramatically. Whereas uh, with DNN, if something doesn't work with the form and list module, it's not going to break the site completely. It's just going to break that element. And um, look, I'm not I'm not a WordPress developer, so I don't I don't understand all of it, and I don't profess to know it. All I do is what millions of other people do: is you look at it and you fall in love all over again. You see a theme and you think, "Oh, I want that. Oh, I want to look like that." But there's um, one thing that I have not found, as as in even in WordPress that I've seen with DNN, and that's that property agent module from Ventrian where I know sure. it's a real estate property module, but the whole context of using XML, which let me tell you, I learned XML in 1999. I read about something that said that it can talk to a, you know, Linux, it can talk to, um, was Mac around then, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's multi-platform and it's, it's a conversation tool basically to talk to different platforms. And, um, and I told my guys, this is the way of the future. And they laughed and laughed and thought I was an idiot. Well, I loved learning. I, I did this little course on XML and it's given me a really good structure in understanding the, how wonderful the the property agent module is in its um, looseness of how you can manipulate it, whether it's going to be real estate. I've used it for directories. I use it for... Um, um, classifieds we use it for uh just just displaying information document downloads so i don't know that wordpress has anything like that because i think wordpress tries to find a, sol a specific solution to something as opposed to letting the person um, building out the site be able to utilize a function that is capable of being flexible oh, look i don't know how to word it exactly but um, I haven't got an analogy for that one, uh, but you get the uh, picture of uh, <laughs> this because property agent. I've not seen anything like it before or or since. It's just such a great module in what it can do when you start thinking about. Here's my set of tools I've got to work with, and I'm not going to, you know, the customer's got a small uh, X amount of budget, or I haven't got X amount of time, but I know this product and I think I can get something more out of it. And that's what I love mm -hmm. about DNN is it does give you such good, um, a few really good tools to do about 80% of what anyone really ever needs to have securely. That's a good and, quote and, right there. Oh, you, look, <laughs> you learn a few over the years when you're just like, oh shit, should I use WordPress or not? I can't. <laughs> I want to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. I don't hate. I don't hate it. So um, I just do taunt so, it a bit, particularly. Oh, sorry. Go on. That's so, so, so how about some other uh, comparisons and things? We talked a little bit about um, uh, you know the, the the core bending of articles to be different things. Um, one of the ones that I mentioned before we started the meeting was uh, users and roles and permissions. Uh, maybe let's talk about that for just a second. Um, one of my understandings from back in the day with WordPress, we've had, we, we have some WordPress sites, it's just that we don't focus on it. And any solution that we need to put together, I automatically see 10 ways I can do it in DNN and I really don't feel confident about any solutions that I would do from scratch in WordPress. So that's just my, my vantage point that I come no, from. But, but there's, um, ten, there's 10 you can buy, on you, there's 10 or 20 or 100 <laughs> you can buy, 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 buy. And then this really? is another thing, um, it's it's just because it's not in um, because it's not inherent in the product itself. 
you can have 10 very good membership solutions that are seem to me to be like a combination of work of e-commerce and membership in it but they each have got a different um, way of working and it's a very long drawn out thing at times to find out is this going to work and then you have to pay for it now I do not mind paying for things what I what I what I am very proud of with Dean in that the longer you own it the less it costs you because when you pay for something unlike some of these memberships some of the products are not all but some of the products if you don't keep paying that that monthly subscription it stops working and mm. I feel like it's holding people to ransom so, um, or if you don't up, if you don't upgrade it, then you become vulnerable. You know, if you don't keep mm -hmm. paying. So, so to me, I don't mind paying a fair a fair price for something, but the membership structure uh, for DNN is just so far out of like it's it's so far out of high up in the league of of um, done that I don't know why you'd be having a conversation about membership with people and WordPress. With anything else. Well, that's, that's what I was going to ask about is that to my knowledge back in the day, and I think recently, um, there isn't anything of that granularity of users, roles, and permissions from the element on the page to the page type of control that DNN just has at its core. Are there even plugins that allow you to get to that in, in WordPress? Um, TK in the room is, is nodding his head. So, you know, when I look at a, a, there are? a question, a there are project where there are users involved, WordPress wouldn't be it because there isn't really good user management. So there are some um, plugins for that, but she said you have to pay for them to get any good usability out of it. And is it robust? Does it give you page level and you know module level and page level equivalent uh, type of control? Actually, no. He, he, well, yeah. so so Nina, no, it would be more of just. Well, I don't. I'm I'm trying to think now. I don't. I don't know of any because generally, um, the person who may be using a membership will just be using one of a lead page thing to get some money to get some downloads. You know that that's the mm. context in which some of these membership sites are used. Um, like some sort of paywall, but that's only often to get a digital, um, a, a, a digital pr product. Uh, so I'm not an expert in that area because I haven't actually gone through, I've, I've researched and I read a lot, but what happens after you read a lot of things and, you know, it's like looking at four, five, six houses in a day, every house becomes the same. Um, so yeah. I have to be careful and it's, and it's not my focus. A lot of my, um, Look, I, I look at the reason I have to keep looking at WordPress is because I love it, <laughs> the way it looks, and I just want that 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 Pandora's box to be the perfect one for me. But but at the end of the day, I look at I think you know what's important, the granularity of the membership uh, of the of the roles, and that's using the Microsoft inherent. Um, I don't think Dean and um, sorry Dean and you can't pride yourself for having written that yourself, but you are taking. Right. advantage of what Microsoft, the thousands of hours, the hundreds of thousands of hours of coding that's gone into make the mem Microsoft membership structure, you know, it's, you're tapping into something good already. So you, you, I don't know how we could even start. Uh, I don't think, you know, when you look at DNN at how old DNN is, is as well, you know, 14 years old nearly now. So we're looking at, um, it has and it has evolved over time, even though it hasn't been to my um, always to my agreements in things. But it has evolved and it's it's very stable. Uh, and it, even those people complain complain about it being maybe bloatware or heavy or whatever whatever they complain about, it is still powering some very big projects that that um, I that I know like. Okay, so is, does so does WordPress. Well, WordPress, WordPress engine, the WordPress, you know, WordPress.com has built that ecostructure to pull in a lot of um, the big guys. Neat. That's a different. That's a different world. That's a completely different world. But I can tell you, I could I could do some nice membership sites for about you know one. 
fraction of the of the of the money you'd have to pay to get the same functionality um, with WordPress, even if you had all mm -hmm. the custom coding. Um, but the membership part for me, like I, I've got one, uh, I like the fact that we've been able to write small um, authentication providers. I think that's a really cool thing. So uh, one of the sites I've got, they've got 63,000 members and there's really only a few thousand active on the website. And at any one time, there might only be a few, I wouldn't say there'd be any more than a hundred. I, I can't imagine any, it's just, I couldn't even imagine that even at peak time. But we, you know, Mitch wrote the um, authentication provider for it, so it talks to an external system nicely. And this is again what I like about, you know, it can it, the authentication. So you don't have to, you can appease someone else's product without having to get them to cross over completely to DNN. So that's. It's been very helpful. It just all it does is, you know, knocks on the door, checks their checks their current member, and and then logs them in. And if they haven't mm -hmm. signed up before, it silently signs them up, assign, puts their details into the database. So it's it's seamless. Um, there's not a lot of other things that Dean in that does as seamlessly. I think with the APIs, that's my little weak point. I think with with Dean, I'd love to connect to some like Active Mail, uh, you know, or um, uh, or just Zapier, some web hooks, uh, maybe because I don't know how to do it. But I can't fault uh, the way it works, particularly down to, um, you know, page level, module level, that a person, you can give someone a person, not just a role, but a person uh, yeah. permission, that then you can have it expire. You don't have to think about it, set and forget stuff. So my clients have found that to be very, helpful um i like there's something else that i that i'd um scalability now in australia we had something called click frenzy they tried it several times it went they ended up being called click fail here's oh. here's what i like <clears throat> i go to i go to um i go to a conference and here i can be a millionaire online i'm an entrepreneur i'm going to get people to pay me a million bucks as my five dollar website you know, it's just, and they get yourself a WordPress site, um, go and sign up and go and do your selling and go and pitch your project. And this company did this. They got all a lot of shopping companies, a lot of shops, uh, like um, retail companies to have certain products that they would put online for sale and they marketed it heavily, did not last 30 seconds. It couldn't, there's no scalability. And I think that that's something too that um, I'm not, um, there's like there's some museum software around that um, that someone want to, is trying to implement into a WordPress site, and the museum software people have said WordPress, by how it's written, is not designed for this, and the scalability is not there, and it will fail because it's not even if you try. You can give it a lot of RAM, you can boost the machine up, but how it functions in in uh in how it does things is not as scalable as um you know as it would be with uh even a custom written solution so people want the prettiness hey, of how they what was that um, um people yeah, were, just one sorry. second um but, but before we uh go too much further in this um we, we had one uh, in the chat comments there um and i wanted to give uh, that person a chance to uh, speak. I'm not sure if you have audio capabilities, Gregor, or not, but um, if you want to kind of speak to the scalability thing, just from a WordPress uh, perspective, it would be great to hear from you on this. And then we'll circle back to you, Nina. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you great. Okay. Thanks. Great. Um, yeah, regarding scalability, I, I, I simply don't think that uh, it's a problem because um, I'm running a website with almost 200,000 content items ranging from articles, images, uh, all sorts of stuff with, uh, with uh, less than one second response time, I mean load time for the whole page. And I, I'm using a, a shared hosting server with uh, basically just uh, Redis for WordPress object cache. So, um, and even TechCrunch is running on WordPress. So, <laughs> I think we can we can just uh, dismiss uh, scalability being an issue. I mean, um, uh, can you 
Do we have an example of TechCrunch like size running on DNN? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. plenty. Of, and also, you know, let's define what we mean by scalability too. I think you know, there's content scalability, then there's really site scalability, you know, and load site type activity, thing, load, people. yeah, uh, transactions, uh, that that type of stuff too. So um, I, I know we have different perspectives from different uh, different you know, areas there. So uh, definitely, but that's, that, that's an interesting, interesting point you point out there. Yeah, in the comments, one of the things that Gregor started off with is saying that, you know, techcrunch.com is on WordPress and obviously they're a, a heavily trafficked, mm -hmm. very popular uh, industry website and um, they're, they're on, you know, they're on WP as, as, their, as their background. Um, you know, if, we, if we're going to get into examples, Mitch can probably get into some good large examples of, of scalability in the DNN world. Uh, I also point often back to the, uh, the DOD as my example, just because of the nature of one large decision impacting a lot of websites to come along with it. So when the Department of Defense in 2012 chose DNN as their public facing platform, that got you the Marines.mil, that got you the Navy, the Air Force, the VA Veterans Hospital, um, I heard some number of like what 600 and something instances of, of when, DNA or when he was talking about how many was changing over that year there was yeah, a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you've definitely got scalability and from a government perspective a large volume of traffic that's that's coming onto these sites um, um, but I think I lost the point of where I was going with that. Yeah. well let's circle back to Nina because yep. she was right in the middle of thought and I kind of interrupted her there but I wanted to give uh, some other folks a chance to chime in there yep no, I'm going to I'm just see on my side here. I, um, I haven't got much window, so I'm going to scroll down. Um, look, yes, these fantastic bigger companies running magazine style sites um, are running that are running on WordPress on an infrastructure and a budget that is far exceeds the average person. Because you, I think sometimes that we can't compare. Uh, you've got to compare apples with apples. Because a lot of these shared sites, um, are, you know, the five dollar a month, whatever, where they stack, you know, five thousand, ten thousand WordPress sites um, on one server, uh, and at the end of the day, ninety five percent of them are not going to really do anything, and you can you can get away with it. Uh, the management of it would, I think, does make them, um, like you said earlier, makes them a target, um, but. I can't. I can only uh, comment on an on an email that I had received on the on the person who's who's doing this. Um, you know, like you know, when you go to these information places and they look on the computer, they've got the historical information about the town, and people come in and they give all their information and they they then archive it. It was archiving. It was it was museum archiving software that they came out and they said you will never get the same results trying to do something um, uh, and connect to a WordPress site to feed the information out. Now, this could have been from the point of view of them and their product and how it's been written, that it can't be pushed out to a WordPress site in the same way. I don't have all those facts, but I do know that in our, in our little country of Australia, with our 25 million people sitting and clicking on that screen to try and buy our cheap little click frenzy product, it turned into click fail. So they then came back because, um, you know, you're only a failure if you don't come back and do it again with Magento. And the same thing happened, a WordPress site with Magento on the back end of it. And they didn't have all that caching and didn't have all the scalability in there. And it happened again, and I haven't heard from them since, but I'm thinking third time lucky, you know, then maybe they've read the book, I don't know when the horse is dead, but um, you know, so I, <laughs> it's, it's just, uh, uh, you know, they weren't paying for the $11,000 a year of Magento. It was the free one. Once again, we come back to this thing about ah. you know, throwing money at something. <laughs> uh, mm, yeah. Sorry. And, uh, well, well, the scalability is one thing. Let's kind of edge over to uh, some more topics of uh, points of comparison and differences of, of DNN 
and WordPress, and maybe some comparisons there of why one over the other. Uh, one APIs. Uh, yeah, APIs is about? one thing that JD uh, brought up. And I don't know if he wants to talk a little bit and kind of focus us on on the co conversation on where where to talk about. But it was in general APIs and integration with mobile apps yeah, and some of the comparisons there between the two platforms. Um, I'll, I'll kind of kick things off by saying you know, it looks like WordPress, you know, API REST API is baked in now. Uh, to it, uh, so so you can pretty easily uh, integrate uh, with that, um, and DNN uh, certainly allows for the building out of custom APIs and so forth uh, through the uh, DNN's flavor of Web API. Um, so anybody else want to chime in on this? I'm not an expert on APIs. I just get API envy. I go, you know, and I say to someone, "Can you do it for DNN?" And who? What? 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 <laughs> oh dear! And I, uh, I, I, yes, I'm forever looking at that glass shop, and thinking, I don't think I'll ever go in, but gosh, it looks great. It's um, pretty. It's uh, pretty. It, it does. It's another thing with um, e-commerce as well. Uh, you know, that's uh, oh. because, believe it or not, I have been using Catalog Store. Uh, you know, you think, oh my God, catalog, what is that? Does it exist? It's actually, I've, I've got one site that does, you know, it does half a million dollars over a season with, um, you know, 30,000 transactions and it just powers and it connects automatically to a SQL server and an access database, uh, the front end for the, for the user. Um, and I think that it's a, more of a developer tool. But I think that um, DNN has possibly, um, like I've looked, you know, hotcakes, I've loved, uh, looked at the product, but um, I don't, I think sometimes you look at the cost of things. <clears throat> with um, with, uh, with DNN, that I have found at times, you, you, are, you are in competition. This is a, probably a good topic with the WordPress market where in particular to plug in to get a shopping cart like this equid shopify um Word, uh, uh, woocommerce and woocommerce magento so as far and and they are platforms that plug in so neatly uh with 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 dnn that uh well sorry with wordpress that i wish dnn had the same uh, thing my, my son he did because my son's a PHP guy writes you know firmware CGI Perl script he's, he's been a bit of a bad boy in his younger years but um, we have written some software that has uh, hooked into PHP but we've also he actually we actually had an amazing fully blown shopping cart uh, using the uh, XML functions with um, catalog to turn, you know, those, um, you know, instant store you, you, inventory sites where you can go and connect to their, um, you can connect, this is for people who want to sell online, you know, that they, they buy a product, they, they, they get a product and they get an affiliate commission um, and they've got a whole site built out on basically someone else's stock. And uh, there's quite a bit of this going around for small people and we've, we've, we've tried and we've been able to build it out in, in, in catalog, it's been pretty good. But I would love to be doing more with um, e-commerce, but my client base and the typical clients I have, I am always faced in a, with a financial competition of, you know, oh, but Magento is free. And it's like, yes, but Magento, yeah. you know, the, the, the one that works is actually $11,000 a year. So, right, right. <laughs> I, yeah. and, and I struggle. But, with so that. Maybe Maybe bring that to, um, oh, I was going to pass something to Mitch. Uh, it looks like his connection dropped there for a second. Um, what I was going to say is, you know, let's talk about e-commerce plugins. That, uh, that is a, a, a criticism of, of DNN, of people saying, well, why is, you know, a hotcakes instance or, a, you know, catalog is one out there, Smith card instance. Why are these stores so difficult to set up? It'd be so easy to just go and get a WordPress location and stick WooCommerce onto it and be done with it. And... Part of the structure of that e-commerce and things that you can do with it is is part of that conversation. But maybe something that's important to me isn't important to the end customer, so they don't they don't see that or value that. Um, 
maybe some of the other folks uh, on uh, you know online bringing in their suggestions of CMS systems that plug in with e-commerce there. Um, we, we have many in the DNN community that are, are e-commerce platforms, and we've, we've talked about a lot of them, and we have some favorites. But um, at the end of the day, we get a lot of uh, blank stares and uh, complaints when we're not using WooCommerce or, or a WordPress-related plugin. Uh, does anybody have good um, talking uh, bullet points to respond to their clients with where um, their underlying problems or scalability issues, or are we, is that an example of a place where we we're fighting a losing battle and WordPress just has good, good e-commerce plugins? Well, it doesn't, it really comes down to the um, applications themselves. If someone was to say, if some DNN developer was to say, you know what, I'm going to put together some good APIs that connect to these third parties. Like at the moment I'm connecting to, um, uh, I'm connecting to I'm connect uh, um, Equid. I've got a little jam making day and I just went to an Equid store for free. You know, you can embed a whole little Equid store into DNN quite nicely just with an iframe uh, or saw script in that. But, but I wish that there was um, some way that when they buy something that they could connect them to be a registered user. You know, but there's not, there's no, there's, I can use iframes. Well, I guess actually, I think maybe WordPress might be the same, might, but mightn't it? Because our, does the WordPress site actually do any more than embed that widget nice, nicely? Because there's not really any, yeah, this is a thing that I noticed with the Magento store that I had that was running on WordPress with a client, which they, then moved on to the to uh, Shopify. They, the WordPress site was like the carrier where they could put the theme on. Uh, it's, it's a strange thing, perhaps it, they put the theme on it, but it's actually running a whole uh, Magento site within it. So it, rather than using the Magento look and look and feel, they've actually add blogs to it or things like that. So there's something strange about how all this integrates, and I I don't understand. Maybe I'm looking for more than it can really do, but I would have thought to, a nice streamlined effect would be someone buys something from the little plugin that I've got on my website that's integrated nicely into DNN, and a nice registered to DNN letter comes out and says, "Hi, thanks for buying. Now you're a member of the website." So maybe I'm looking too deeply into what I'm expecting because I've got an assumption that the membership thing should be in everything. A membership functionality should be in yeah. everything, and it's not with WordPress. Maybe it's me. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or any of us with with the view of how that works well in DNN. Um, so kind of bringing the, bringing the question and passing the baton to folks um, online and on uh, on the phone conversation as well. Um, anybody else have good suggestions there of of the what you say to customers and clients when they're talking about e-commerce and WordPress versus versus those same things in DNN. Are there any other good points of wisdom? I don't know if uh, Mitch came back on yet. I don't see him looking. Yeah. Um, well, kind of going back around to the API side of things then, uh, uh, JD was uh, really onto a good few things there, talking about API and uh, talking about how, um, you know, things are heading towards mobile as the focus, uh, mobile applications and, um, uh, JD, do you want do you want to chime in there a little bit? Uh, maybe um, point that towards differences there between WordPress and DNN. Are you are you saying that you're seeing support for that in the WordPress community and you don't see it yet in the DNN community? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, actually, what I think is, see, when uh, 2002, 2003, when uh, .NET Nuke started. And that time the, the 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 age was of websites, and that is how. And the uh, DNN was the first CMS or first open source project on uh, Windows platform. Rest of everything was on other uh, Linux and all. You know that is how it came in. And that time, mm -hmm. uh, but the, now when we talk about platform independent or that kind of a thing, the situation is different. What we are talking about is mobile apps. 
so uh, basically you know now 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 when we talk about platform independent that doesn't merely mean that it should be on uh, windows and linux only it should be on mob- different kind of you know, uh, mobiles like uh, ios or android or you know symbian and those kind of a things so looking to that now what we need is we basically need a uh, mobile framework you could probably call it like dnn was a website or cms framework now we need probably mobile framework so basically we need some kind of a situation whereby the you make one code base and a different uh, you know the kind of a model or view views for different uh, application different devices so mobile devices is one and the web could work could be one of the devices so if we can have some kind of an a web web apis or some kind of a things built into the dnn see what is happening is suppose i want to log in in a dnn website using mobile app then i mean I, i just can't do it so i can run the mobile app i can make a web view and run the Uh, dnn on any, any other website but if i want to really interact with the database then i have to have some kind of an web api if i want to do it right now i have to do everything on my own as an application developer i have to develop everything whereas in case of uh, wordpress and all they are giving you web apis right so be, or some kind of an api so that what you can do is you can just integrate them and only use your custom thing only to be added so you can leverage the functionality offered by the way, uh, wordpress so that you can easily make an web uh, uh, you know mobile apps so my point was that if you can do some kind of a, the, the those and those those things basic things in dnn and offer those as a web api or a web services or some kind of a services which can be consumed directly on the mobile apps that would be great um, one of the things that we do on a normal basis is we integrate with both wordpress and dnn from a mobile app perspective and you know dnn does have the built especially in dnn 8 and above you've got the jwt authentication you can authenticate against the dnn user base so that is there um and then as far as integrating with it we build our own APIs to to get to whatever data we want to within the context of DNN. WordPress is a little different in the sense that it has its own API for accessing, you know, all the articles and posts that are pages and posts that are in there, so you can just go directly to that. You don't really have to roll your own API yeah. in that sense. It's just more on how you've got how you're utilizing mm-hmm. that data and structuring mm-hmm. it and, you know, presenting it and so forth. So But it's uh, there, but yeah. you're building it yourself to what you need, and and part of that was what what JD was saying was that he has to do it himself, right. and, and I understand that. Part of it too is that then under the core, you might be able to instantly build that type of thing if you were only dealing with the HTML module content or some you know, specific set of content, and you could have that automatically. But once you have so many different things, you have to kind of build your own. Yeah, you got to manage it out. Yep. Um, two, um, Joe Brinkman, if you're if you're on or able to do audio, if you wanted to uh, talk a bit about liquid content on that perspective, because it's not exactly the same. But when you're talking about managing um, content, uh, that's that's the point of the focus of of DNN liquid content um, uh, approach in that you're managing that content that's getting pushed out to multiple locations. Uh yeah, can you can you rephrase the the first part of that Ryan because I didn't I didn't catch that. I was I was just coming back into the office. No worries, no worries. Yeah, no no worries. Um so JD was talking about APIs and in the WordPress world uh, about how there's just a ready-made AP, web API presence in WordPress that just lets him begin using it to, to get to that content. And I might argue that it's because it's the blog related core article content and I, and I said, well, you know, the, the Um, David talked about uh, you know his view of, of building those same types of things in DNN, uh, where we do have web API uh, available and we can build things, but we're having to build that API ourselves. Um, so that was kind of the API direction, but I wanted to pass it over to you for a moment about liquid content in that you know the world of getting your content and managing that content for mobile applications and having DNN be the core of it. That is the focus of liquid content. Um, So I thought I'd pass the baton to you there for a couple seconds. Yeah, the uh so I think there's there's two parts to that. I think first, I think there's a uh misconception about what's available in the platform today. 
Um, if you look at what we've done in 9.0 and 9.1 uh, with Persona Bar, uh, almost all of the core platform is now available via web API, right? So really good. Uh, most of those core accessible features that you care about, uh, you can get at. Um, if you look at liquid content, uh, that goes even one step further uh, and makes that open, uh, makes the raw content open through a well-defined API. You know, that's one of the challenges with, with platform is that the content itself uh, doesn't necessarily have those well-defined APIs because every module defines its own API. Um, so figuring out what the API might be uh, becomes more challenging there. With liquid content, because regardless of, of what content types you're working with, you're using a single API, that becomes a bit easier. Um, so so what? trade-offs to both approaches. Joe, so what I was asking that see, like for example, you know, I understand that uh, you know in nine nine point one and on, we have got some better things, some web uh, web APIs exposed. But uh, suppose I want see, there are first of all, we don't have ready-made uh, uh, good tools. Like for example, you know, WooCommerce is free free kind of a thing. Now of course the hotcake is there. So those kind of in uh, e-commerce or those kind of in uh, modules, they that is not exposing those web, web APIs. And of course, that may not be the concern of the platform. But as an application developer, if I want to sell it to the customer, I mean, what is what is the what are the options that I have? Suppose I want to send a mobile application, mobile e-commerce application, what options do I have? I if I use, if I want to use DNN, I have to develop entire e-commerce platform basically on, on the mobile app too. And on a on, on a module too then only I can use it. But suppose we have some kind of a mechanism so that a module developer can utilize and expose this web API so that it can be further consumed. See, like for example, if I want to make an, a, a, a WordPress e-commerce application on a mobile, I just have to use the API offered by the WooCommerce. And I am not sure whether WooCommerce has made that API himself or it, it is exploiting some part from the from the WordPress. But well, we need. See, I mean, it. I, this is where um, this is where it comes into. This is not a WordPress uh, thing. Someone has seen an opportunity to get their product into into a very big CMS. Now, if WooCommerce was to say the same thing with DNN. I think you'd have a different, uh, a different environment to you know to work with because that is not a DNN and WordPress. Yeah. Um, that's that's where I can see when how you're talking. This is why I say to the developers, uh, you know, I've got a few people I know who are writing a bit of code here and there, and and then talk about they're going to do the WordPress plugin. So it's actually been driven by the. Um, by the vendor as opposed to the actual right. CM, the CMS being used. So to, I, I to yeah, that's there. the frustrating part. Yeah, to Nina's point there, uh, Hotcakes is an example of that. Hotcakes has a very robust web API for the things they allow you to do. And that's because they wanted to build that. So framing her, or her statement again, it, that's a little bit more of a difference between what a module vendor has done in their production versus a capability or a, something that's provided for in the underlying CMS of WordPress versus DNS. Um, we were kind of running up to the, the end of our meeting here and, and I wanted to at least throw in one more topic just to hear. And, and that kind of comes back around to how I know Nina the most uh, from the beginning is, um, let's talk just a little bit about theming and skinning here for a few minutes. Um, that is another major difference in DNN versus yeah. WordPress. And I think it deserves a little bit of of conversation uh, with the group, um, you know, there's there's a, an an integrated level in which in WordPress themes mean functionality, and when you put in new or different types of themes, many times they have functionality built into those themes, and they're not separated from each other. Whereas in DNN, there's a very different structure in that the style or the theme the skin 
normally in itself doesn't have any functionality built into it. It's just about theming. It's just about that, that styling. Um, uh, so that is a difference between WordPress and, and DNN. And there are parts of that that I think of as a strength. Um, but I, I want to put it out to the group there for, for some thoughts about that. Look, <laughs> you know something? I, <clears throat> I remember um, back in the forums, that, you know, the forums at ASP.net days, because um, I was thinking about, I'm going to be talking to you guys, well, uh, a little bit of history. I can remember there was a, an urban myth, a DNN myth, that you could only have 10 panes in a skin. And I didn't think anything of it, but one day I counted mine, I had 11. <laughs> and, I, and I remember posting on the forums somewhere about, oh my God, something's wrong. I've got 11 pains. What has happened? You know, you, you, could, you, you, you can only have 10 places to put content and I've got 11. What have I done wrong? So I, 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 I'm proud that I exploited that, that myth. But so now we've got skins, uh, some... <laughs> It's, I yeah, can remember. Some, it's some just skin can put twenty-two uh, panes in a, in a in a theme. Oh, there's a lot now. Um, see, I don't do I don't do uh, I don't do skinning really these days. Now I've moved out of that. I did employ staff to do it, but because what I noticed is, like any technology, uh, is that you know DNN was so big because it was new at the time and i think it that the, the fact that it didn't go onto a um onto an onto a platform like liquid contents going on there now but because wordpress sort of basically became a hosted solution from early on that they they lost a lot of a lot of their market but it also times change so what would happen is um john mitchell you know you're familiar you know john mitchell from snapsys he was on the core team that and he's doing some amazing things with dnn i i just got a lot of respect for him he's done a lot of work for me but he built there was no real theming between uh, native theming in dnn one two um not really till three but he had a skinning engine and so i would write so he basically yeah. was that that um <clears throat> you know that uh, conduit between you'd install it and put a pic you know and it would work because because beforehand you'd have to skin the whole um the whole basically just, yeah. the whole site, uh, the core files actually, that's what I meant to say. And he put the engine in that allowed you to separate that. So, uh, and I think possibly um, we started to get on very well because I was doing, I was theming the whole site, but um, he saw an opportunity um, because I just do, you know, I just provide him with, the, with files or, and you'd have to put a bit of code in, you know, into the into the themes, and then it would work great. But as time has progressed, so has um, that's the Snapsys theme engine. That's right, um, from many yeah. years ago. But uh, but like anything, um, as the uptake of and, and awareness and more people come online, and then themes change, you know. Basically, I think now because we have mobile devices, that the, the whole concept of design has really been thrown away again, that basically it's it's squares and rectangles, Windows 8 style, you know, and they brought their window or the windows very square and flat for speed. So the whole the look and feel of technology it, um, you've got the eye candy, but you can get it so well in CSS. It's, it's gone so far that I, I think now with responsiveness as well and Bootstrap, you know, plugging into the expertise has changed the dynamics on how skinning is done. And basically you can buy a theme from many different suppliers and the context of it is still really the same. Um, I think that... Uh, one thing I'd like to see with Dean and is, is that I've been reading about um, Google's AMP uh, for mobile yeah. devices. I've been playing around with it a little bit. So I wish I need to learn a little bit more um, about how to make to amplify the site. You know, you, you know, Google's AMP that that's when, yeah. you know, when you go and do a search on Google and you've got those little it's already a pre answered content. Good on Google. Don't take people to the website. Um, I think that there's there's opportunity for people to enhance their um, uh, search engine capabilities by having more amplified sites uh, with with Google. 
but I think design has completely turned around again. Years ago, the designer had a say. Now I don't say. think the designer has as much say. So, um, oh, yeah. go ahead, well, well, I was going to mention, you know, this is this is really an area I think where DNN does have a strong um, strong pull because you know the theming is literally just tied to the styling of all content right and all kind of structure of the page you know and, and all that whereas you know if if, um, if a client sends us a support request says how do you do x you know in wordpress well that answer depends on the theme they're using a lot of times and what you know what is in there um, and how it works you know because if it has a builder built into it you know, a page builder or something like that, you know, it's like, well, that's very different in one instance WordPress, whereas if they're using another theme, and I think this is probably a good strong suit of DNN, we, we can the give the instructions the same regardless of what theme they're using. Um, and that, for the most part, now, some of these things are real bloated with, you know, a bunch of, you know, jQuery plugins and things like that that are Sometimes, doing yeah. rotators. Yeah, okay, there might be some, mm -hmm. some nuances here and there, but the core functionality of of DNN is true across all things. Not it doesn't change there's or have a perception of change. There are right? established so, rules that are more generally yep, followed. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, any anybody else in, in the uh, in the conversation um, want to jump in here, folks online? I can keep talking. Right. I can talk about. <laughs> I love things. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. Oh, we're we're coming up here on uh, three thirty, which is our uh, you know kind of our wrap up time here for uh, for the conversation and for the meeting. Um, and then it's wake up time. So we got to go. Wake up time. It's four a.m. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I would like to make one more um, strong point Please, about yeah, DNN we'll that I think is mark. so underrated is the portal. Okay power power of the portal the yes. fact that you know i'm running one site with 150 portals on it if you were um if you were a franchise or have a or, or have a dozen different companies or sites or online presence the content sharing functionality um and the fact that you can run everything off one portal is is something that I am so impressed with. I, I have loved mm -hmm. it so much because, say, even if I've got the news articles module now, um, you know, I can share content throughout that whole instance. But mm -hmm. say with the 150 branches I've got with with um, you know the Uly Ulysses Motorcycle Club, I've got 150 or maybe 160 branches and each one of the administrators logs in and on their mm -hmm. own site they they put their rides on and we've configured right. the articles module that we then pull that data in on the primary website and we're using yep. uh, property agent to pull in rides that when the person looks at it they can then go to the the main web to the branch website mm -hmm. but the fact that we've got um, content that we can share throughout those 150 branches makes the managing of it and the upgrading of it um, uh, outstanding. And it's, um, I know WordPress has options now where you can do this, uh, but it um, really it's been from it, day one. there was a big difference, yeah. You know, you can have one administrator can then manage all the sites and look, look I know WordPress has got a lot of things now that we were the first. <laughs> I've got my first flag. I was on the moon first. There's my footprint. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's one thing. But I also think it, it doesn't slow the site down really to having, um, I reckon you could have hundreds of portals on there for the small brochure sites. If you're a small marketing agency and you wanted a nice, tight, secure install, if you grab yourself a couple of good themes and, and the theme builders for DNN, um, you could have as many portals as your business could probably fit for your customers, which I know you can have it with WordPress, but you've got this security. Someone wants to have membership. It's easy, um, you know, it's easy to log, log them in. Um, but the, but the message like you have in training and, um, you know, it, it, it's all consistent. And I think that from a marketing point of view, I, I like I, I do like the comfort of that. Um, that's one thing I think has been outstanding. 
That, that's a really um, good wrap up of, of a major difference between DNN and WordPress. Um, uh, just to ask the question and make sure I, I get the, the details on it from what WordPress can do now. Because at one point in time, you had to do a separate WordPress instance for every single separate website you wanted to have in WordPress. But they, they now have an ability to have one WordPress instance that has multiple websites on it. Multi-site. Multi-site. Okay, so within that type of structure in WordPress now, separate administrators who cannot mess with your stuff, or is there bleed bleed over between the two? Um, and anybody online have, have some insight on that? Multi multi website or multi. Well, um, Greg, Gregor mentioned that it does have that support, but he's not a huge fan mm -hmm. about that. Because that is one of the main things of DNN. Whether you want to make it a uh, a parent or a child uh, type of individual portals, you don't have to leave the same website, and you can have sub sites inside of the same site. So it's another example of granularity there that gets pretty complex. Um, but it's that that muscle that you can flex that really means you can do some very different things with DNN related to two portals, whether they're different websites or simply subsites of those those websites in regards to menu navigation, main administrators who can and can't affect other things. Um, but then between portals and uh, portal groups, uh, then that ability to have content go between multiple portals, modules that help you get that content between multiple portals, like article modules, that's a pretty big difference of something that's available just out of the box in, in DNM. Well, we kind of mentioned too, yes, pretty soon there's going to be another key differentiator. Yeah, it's going to have a command prompt built into it, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no one else has a I, I don't prompt. think anybody else, okay. including WordPress, is going to have that. Right? So if you're yeah. not in the, in the know on that one, be sure to catch one of the previous uh, Southern Pride meetings where we uh, talked with uh, Kelly Ford, uh, talked with uh, Prompt, uh, that, that module, and the, the really exciting fun things you can do with that. And of course, that is being brought into Core, uh, so we'll see it now soon enough uh, across the board. And it's a, it's a pretty big difference there. Um, I would say the marketers and advertisers would, would cringe at the idea of seeing a prompt, uh, you know, a, a command prompt uh, on screen, but for us developer types, that's a very exciting thing. Um, yeah, Gregor mentioned WPCLI as well, which is, yeah, we, it's a little different. Uh, you'll have to look up so, uh, that past meetup on, um, on DNN prompt. To, uh, to, to get into to, it to understand okay, a little yeah. bit more of what we're talking about there. Well, uh, folks, uh, I want to kind of uh, bring the conversation to a close here and, and, and wrap up. Uh, thank you to everybody that joined us online. Uh, we had folks from Corp. We had folks from Community. We had uh, folks in the U.S. We had folks in the U.K. We had folks in Australia. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a great kind of meeting here that we love to see where uh, everybody's joining in on the conversation and uh, sharing their experiences. So. Uh, thank you, first off, to Nina Myers for joining us here and uh, agreeing to help host this conversation with us. Um, kind of going to give her a round of applause real quick for um, Thank you for joining us early, early in the morning here. Um, yes. Uh, David, you, you Sun, sun sunrise. Yeah, I was going to mention. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention one thing too. We have Hans Lansing on the line as yes. well. So anybody that has not uh, registered yet as a DNN expert on do DNN dot work. Please go out there and do that. Um, looking to grow that database of DNN experts out there. And if you need projects yeah. uh, for DNN, that's a great place to post your projects and connect up with some DNN experts. Um, and you know, I think we mentioned it briefly at our last um, user group meeting, but uh, let's let's make a note that at our, our following uh, meeting next month, uh, let, let's have a moment to bring up the site and describe uh, do DNN work. Um, because it's an important uh, new resource that's out there that we should help promote. And again, the, the idea there that if you're not already registered, uh, go ahead and register yourself, register your organizations. It's, um, that, that's the point of it. That's the point of it. It's, uh, there we go. It's on screen. Um, you know, good looking, clean uh, design picks. Mobile app coming for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, really? we're, oh, it is a mobile yep, app coming. Yep. We're working on a mobile app right now and uh, got delayed a little bit. <laughs> we'll eventually get back <laughs> on right. that and get that launched. I thought I'd mention it. Um, well, again, uh, you know, as we wrap it up, thank you everybody for participating. Um, this was a, an overall conversation about 
you know, what you say, what you answer when people talk about the differences between DNN and WordPress. Uh, we might even have a follow-up uh, meeting in which we get into each of your individual responses because I have heard some some pretty crafty, clever uh, responses, uh, not uh, in evading the question, but really cutting to the heart of it. Um, and that's what I'd love to do is share with, with everyone uh, some of those differences and um, reasons that you can help take to your own clients and your own conversations. Um, our next uh, DNN user group meeting for Southern Pride DNN uh, should be August the 21st. That will be the third Thursday. Of, uh, <laughs> We've gotten a pattern, though. August. Going the fourth Thursday uh, you, now. You know what? I, I just said <laughs> August, but I, I meant September. Uh, yeah. you know, coming up next month. Um, but please do check, uh, you know, check in with us or, or check online and on our website. We'll, we'll post when we're having that meeting. Um, we might be looking at changing from being the third Thursday to being the last Thursday or the fourth Thursday. Um, but uh, again, if we do so, we'll we'll be sure to announce early on. Um, uh, you know, and, finishing up. and those of you not in the U.S. or actually in the U.S. as well, but yep. uh, we we are going to try to continue this um, this format once yes. per quarter. Uh, the the meetups will be earlier in the day for mm -hmm. us here uh, mm -hmm. to allow for those uh, not in our time zone to be able to join. Uh, I think everybody's used to listening to the replays and and all that. So it's uh, really nice to have some uh, folks home that aren't normally able to yep. join us. So if you're interested in being involved in one of those, uh, even beyond participating, please do reach out to us. Please, yeah. Uh, you can send an email to info at southernpridednn.com mm -hmm. and we'll be uh, happy to entertain that. Of course, most of you probably know how to reach me on Facebook as well. We yep. can uh, do that. All right. Well, thanks very much, everyone. That uh, concludes our August uh, meeting of Southern Pride DNN. We will see you next month and uh, talk to you soon.